Thank you. We have topical questions. Question one, Alex, Fer Alex Johnson. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking in response to the recent flooding. Cabinet Secretary Johnson. Officer, my sympathies go to those who have been affected by the recent severe weather, and I would wish to pay tribute on behalf of the Government to the first-class response offered by local authorities, emergency responders and the public themselves. The Scottish Government places a priority on reducing flood risk across Scotland, and we are committed to working with SEPA, local authorities and other partners. SEPA's recent flood risk strategy set out an agenda for the national direction of future flood risk management, helping to target investment and to coordinate actions across public bodies. The strategies explain what causes flooding in high-risk areas, as well as the impacts when flooding does occur. This information is used as a basis for better decision-making across flood risk management organisations and supporting actions such as flood protection schemes and flood warning schemes. Alex Johnson. I thank the Minister for his answer. Uh, I am aware that the Minister uh, has himself visited the Upper Deeside Side area and seen for himself the conditions that have prevailed there. Uh, would he at this stage be able to tell me what support the Government can offer to both the local authority and to individuals who have been seriously hit by this flooding damage? Cabinet Secretary. So, no, so there are two, two specific um, piece of support that the Government has, uh, is able to make uh, uh, available. But let me just, before I come on to those, just say a word about the scale of the devastation in Balata that I saw last Thursday. Um, it is of uh, quite an incomprehensible scale, to be frank, and I pay tribute to the efforts of many individuals who uh, worked very hard to protect their neighbours and uh, their, uh, their own properties and to support each other in that difficulty. I would single out a number of um, firefighters in the area who were out helping other people while their own properties themselves were being flooded, which I think tells us something about the extraordinary commitment that we are lucky to uh, receive from the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service. Um, on the two specific areas of assistance, I have activated the Bellwyn scheme, which, as Mr Johnson will be familiar, establishes a threshold that local authorities are expected to provide to deal with emergency situations of this type. But any costs beyond that threshold are met by the Government, and I have invited and encouraged Aberdeenshire Council to submit an application for financial support under the Bellwind scheme. Secondly, in the budget statement in December, I made available some support to Perth and Kinross, the Fries and Galloway and the Scottish Borders Councils, exceptionally because of uh, the impact of recent storm incidents. I intend to make a further financial allocation from which I would, uh, I would expect Aberdeenshire Council to um, relieve council taxpayers of their council tax bills, to relieve business rate payers of their business rate bills, and then also to contribute towards some of the regeneration that will clearly be required to recover the situation in Deeside. Alex Jones. <clears throat> One of the features of the devastation in Upper Deeside has been the serious damage that has been done to the A93 trunk road. Uh, can the Minister at this stage tell us if there is any uh, prospect of that damage being rectified uh, in the near future and that all costs will be covered by the Scottish Government under its commitment to a trunk road? The, the, the first thing I'd say is that we obviously have... Um, it's a bit early for me to give the type of commitment about timescale that Mr Johnston is looking for because the, the photographs speak for themselves. There is a very serious piece of damage that has been done to the A93 uh, at that particular stage. Um, we, uh, the, the A93 is a, is a crucial route in terms of access. Um, it, it is currently, um, it cannot be utilised um, in relation to providing a route from Braemar to Aberdeen. Uh, that is unsatisfactory. We have to resolve that as quickly as we possibly can do. Um, there is access from the south through the A93 through Glenshee, but of course, as we all know, uh, that is a, a route which can be very vulnerable and susceptible to the normal weather conditions we would have at this time of year of very heavy snow in the Glenshee area. But uh, we will be taking forward, uh, we are taking forward discussions with Aberdeenshire Council on how the, um, the steps are taken to ensure that that route can be rectified. Angus Macdonald, followed by Eileen Murray. <coughs> the um, Deputy First Minister will be aware of the good work going on in conjunction with Falkirk Council and the petrochemical industry in my constituency to provide flood defences for Grangemouth's refinery and petrochemical plants. Can the Deputy First Minister provide an assessment of the success of flood protection schemes to date in mitigating the impacts of flooding and extreme weather over recent days? Um, we have been very fortunate in the sense that the flood protection schemes that we have in place have been successful to date, and um, uh, I 
was in regular discussion myself last night with Perth and Kinross Council and with SEPA in my own local area as the City of Perth faced a significant challenge last night and a significant test of the existing flood protection scheme. Um, I was uh, frankly relieved um, by the end of last night that the flood pr protection scheme had been successful in Perth and it shows the wisdom and the value of that type of sympathetic investment that is made uh, which protects householders and protects communities. Um, today in the City of Perth we have had to wrestle with the challenges of surface water runoff and drainage challenges within the city itself, uh, although the flood defences uh, proved themselves to be um, uh, entirely secure in the face of an astonishing volume of water that came down from the catchment area of the River Tay yesterday. Ali Murray, followed by Alice McInnes. Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Can I uh, again pay tribute to Dumfries and Galloway's major emergency team in this latest flood? Uh, Cabinet Secretary, my constituents with small businesses in the White Sands, which have been flooded again, many of them already don't pay uh, business rates and they can't be assisted through that route. Many have been unable to get insurance or else the excess payments are prohibitive. And I wonder if the Cabinet Secretary can provide any, uh, advice whether any assistance might be available for those businesses. And can I make it clear that I'm not actually referring to my own office, which was under two and a half feet of water? Cabinet Secretary. I, I, I have to say to Dr Murray that on the television footage that I saw of the free side, I regrettably saw her, her name in lights, which I saw. She has my sympathies for the difficulties that she will undoubtedly be um, experiencing in uh, racing with this, this issue. I take the point that Dr Murray makes. Uh, it's a fair point that um, uh, there will be many of the businesses, uh, uh, the smaller businesses, that will not be paying business rates, that will not be covered by the assurance I have given. She will know that I made a financial uh, uh, commitment to the Friesen Galloway Council. Uh, I intend to look again at that in the light of the events of just the last seven days and the issues that have been wrestled with in the Friesen Galloway. Um, and uh, I think given the financial commitment I've made to uh, the, the, the local authority, I would look to uh, the council to make any provision it can to support individuals in restoring their business and getting back to um, a, a situation where they can operate in those localities. There will, of course, be further discussions about um, flood prevention measures in the White Sands, and I know that the Council has recently come to some conclusions about the design of or the preferred option for those uh, flood protection schemes, and those issues will, of course, be taken forward as part of the discussion about how the resources that we allocate to this area of activity are deployed around the country in the course of the next spending re re review period. Alice McInnes, followed by Rob Gibson. Thank you very much. I mean, around the whole of the North East, um, communities have been affected by flooding, but in Aberdeenshire in particular, it's been unprecedented in its scale and in its scope. And I hope that the government can reassure us that its response um, to Aberdeenshire Council and to the agencies locally will reflect that. Um, the Deputy First Minister mentioned access via Glen Shee. He's right to say <clears throat> that it's at risk of uh, closure if severe weather uh, closes in. Is there, is there therefore an urgency in moving as swiftly as is safe to protect the remaining road links and to restore what's there? What uh, temporary support can you give? Cabinet Secretary. Well, we, will, we, will, well, we are actively involved in discussions with Aberdeenshire Council about the recovery steps that uh, are required to be undertaken. Um, the, I'm sure Alison McInnes will realise that there are um, the, the, the scale of the damage to the A93 on D side um, is such that well, the road is frankly has gone for uh, large parts of the, uh, the, the, the the route length. So therefore, we have to take considered and safe steps to make sure that we recover the situation and to do that as timidly as we possibly can do. And I can assure her of the prompt attention of the government in that respect. Rob Gibson, followed by Claudia Beamish. Thank you, President Officer. I have huge sympathy with the communities that are coping with the floods and, in our case, with inundations from the sea. I would like to turn to ScotRail and uh, the way in which they handle uh, the Highland Main Line. Um, having experienced a two-hour delay myself and a bus all the way from Inverness to Perth, and when there is only, in the uh, Cabinet Secretary's own constituency, a breach in the railway south of Pitlochry, this has been going on since long before Abellio. The information is dreadfully poor for the travelling public, and indeed, I think that this is something which they need to change quickly so that we can use our main spinal route with some confidence. Cabinet Secretary. 
I, I'm, I'll make sure that the Transport Minister is here and he's heard Mr Gibson's points in relation to the information from ScotRail. Um, having spent um, virtually every day of the Christmas and New Year parliamentary recess on a telephone call involving ScotRail, I feel as if I've heard a lot from ScotRail over the course of the last couple of weeks. So uh, I, I, we will take that point seriously because it is, uh, the, the Highland Main Line is a significant part of our rail infrastructure. Um, the foundations and the ballast of the rail line at Inchmagranigan have been swept away by the, uh, the flooding. Uh, the, there is work ongoing, which of course is difficult to access because of the volume of water that is surrounding the site, uh, to gain access to the foundations and to uh, execute a repair as quickly as possible. Um, the projected date for the completion of that work is the 18th of January. Um, but that is, of course, dependent on being able to get access to the site. And, of course, the points that Mr Gibson makes about the, uh, the, the essential requirement for good quality information to be available to members of the travelling public is, is a, a point that is well made. I think over the course of these incidents over the last few weeks, the use by public agencies and organisations and travel companies of uh, social media has been really first class. And uh, I've seen um, in a number of different organisations use this to tremendous effect, uh, capturing great degrees of public involvement and public interest uh, to make sure that we can resolve and overcome some of these challenges. But I'll make sure the Transport Minister looks carefully at the points that Mr Gibson has raised uh, about ScotRail communication. Claudia Beamish, followed by Alex Ferguson. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Across South Scotland, my region, there are many communities who have been affected by the floods recently and in previous years. I want to focus in on New Cumnock. On the 5th of November last year, my colleague Graham Pearson asked the Minister Aileen MacLeod about this area, and she told the Chamber, I quote, to reassure the member, New Cumnock is now very much part and parcel of the national risk management planning process and will be considered accordingly. This is no reassurance to my constituents and those of, Gra of um, Graham Pearson, my colleague, who found themselves yet again devastated by deluge. So I ask the Cabinet Secretary today, will he look again at the SEPA budget in view of the responsibilities they have for flooding and the cuts that have been made by the Scottish Government? And will he also consider uh, a review which Scottish Labour is calling for today and has done, uh, my colleague Sarah Boyack has also called for, of flood strategy by the Scottish Government, working with all local authorities across my region and wa more widely in Scotland. Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit surprised by the line of argument that uh, Claudia Beamish has taken today, because I know she takes a keen and acute interest in these issues, uh, so I'm a bit surprised uh, that, at the line of argument she's taken today. Um, the first thing um, that I would say is that SEPA have no responsibility for flood protection measures, none whatsoever. Uh, SEPA have a responsibility for the flood warning system, which is fully and entirely funded by the government and which is protected, utterly protected, 100 per cent by my budget settlement in December. Now, yes, SEPA is facing a 6.8 per cent reduction in its resource budget. And that is because I have to require public authorities, public authorities across the board, to contribute towards the financial challenge that we have to meet. Now, of course, it is up to Scottish Labour, if they wish, to change my budget. And we've heard so much from Scottish Labour about this question that I will expect Scottish Labour to come back and rectify that reduction in the budget that they have been going on about. And if they don't, if they don't, we will know this just to be rhetoric from Scottish Labour. Now, the second thing is in relation to the flood risk management strategies and the, the work that's been undertaken. Parliament in 2009 passed the Flood Risk Management Scotland Act that required us to do the groundwork this is why I'm so surprised at Claudia Beamish's question. That required us to do the groundwork of establishing flood risk management strategies around the country, of which we now have 14, which have reported to the Minister. And they have generated the suggestions and propositions of, flood, of 42 formal flood protection schemes, costing an estimated £235 million. And I have made provision within the budget for that to be delivered as part of my commitment to the local government finance settlement. So I would have thought... Instead of having another review, we should just get on with implementing these flood risk management strategies, not have another talking shop, but actually get on with delivering the action that Parliament legislated for in 2009, which this government is getting on with and which we are putting the resources in place to deliver.
Alex Ferguson, followed by Dennis Robertson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Yesterday, Presiding Officer, I visited the village of Cass Fern in my constituency, where almost every single house has been flooded, some for the third time in three years. Today, my office has taken a number of calls from businesses in Newton Stewart, which the First Minister and the Minister for the Environment visited last week. These people need financial help, and they need it now. And they are very aware that just across the border in Cumbria, people in similar situations are receiving that help. So can I ask the Deputy First Minister whether he would consider giving urgently needed financial assistance to every business and individual household that has been so badly affected by the recent floods, as is happening in other parts of the UK? Cabinet Secretary. In my uh, inner answer to Mr Johnson in relation to the um, specific financial support that I have made available, I made an announcement in December that uh, affected the Fries and Galloway uh, council area, which would enable the local authority to um, remove any obligation for council tax bills for residents who were uh, removed from their properties and also to business, uh, for business rates as well for businesses that had to relocate. Um, in the light of the events of the last couple of weeks, I intend to provide a further allocation in relation to the costs that will be involved in localities. Uh, that will inevitably have some additional consequences for Dumfries and Galloway, and I will make announcements in due course once I have had a due opportunity to have discussions with the local authority about how that can be taken forward. Dennis Robertson, followed by Lewis MacDonald. Hey, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I echo the words of the First uh, Deputy First Minister when he congratulated the emergency services, the council workers and the army of volunteers in Ballater and Aboyne? Yesterday I was in uh, Ballater again, uh, Mr Sweeney, and they appreciated your visit. But they're asking the question, who's going to help with the clean-up? There's caravans, cars and gardens. Someone needs to recover these and dispose of them. Um, can you give some assurance that this work will be done and there will be no cost to those um, people, or no penalise to those people who uh, uh, whose the, the caravans and cars do not belong to them? And can you also give an assurance to the businesses that remain open that they also will be given some financial assistance, given that Ballater is virtually cut off? Cabinet Secretary. In relation to the, the issue of clean-up and debris, um, there is a complicated interaction here at local level between the needs of individuals. If I take the caravan park, for example, in Ballater, where I assume there will be wider insurance claims that are required to be made by uh, individuals and uh, the caravan park operators, and an interaction between them properly uh, having the opportunity to secure their insurance rectification and the need for there to be a clear-up within the town. Uh, Aberdeenshire Council is best placed to, to, to cooperate with individuals in that respect, and we have uh, open dialogue with Aberdeenshire Council, and I compliment Aberdeenshire Council on the way in which they responded to what was a very dramatic situation uh, last week. Uh, I think that is the, the, the best way for that dialogue to be undertaken, so that these issues can be resolved at local level and the necessary support put in place to try to address the difficulties that individuals are facing as a consequence of a quite unprecedented event in that particular locality. Lewis McDonald. The Deputy First Minister has rightly focused on Upper D side, but will he recognise that there have also been issues overnight in, upper, in Don side in Aberdeenshire, and indeed uh, at the mouths of both the Don and the D in the city of Aberdeen as well. These are whole catchment area issues. Bridge of Dee Court, for example, in Aberdeen, the residents of that sheltered housing had to be evacuated the other day. Will he confirm that uh, his government is working with both the City Council as well as the Aberdeenshire Council uh, on whole catchment strategies? And can he give an indication, given that there are recommendations in the flood management strategies for the Dee and the Don, of when those will be taken forward? Cabinet Secretary. I acknowledge the, the issues that have been wrestled with in um, Kintour and in Veruri and in the city of Aberdeen, uh, both in terms of the incident that took place just before Hugmanay and also in the recent events over the last couple of days. Um, we are in discussion with, the, um, with both uh, Aberdeen City and Aberdeen Shire Councils, and the response um, has been uh, very clear and comprehensive to ensure that uh, the necessary support has been put in place. In relation to the development of the schemes, uh, that will, of course, be part and parcel of the discussion that we have with local government about how we take forward the prioritisation of these schemes over the next few years, um, and ministers will be actively involved in that process and will report fully to Parliament in due course.
Question number two, Mike McKenzie. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what progress it has made on reopening the fourth road bridge to all vehicles. Minister Derek Mackay. Following the successful completion of the complex and detailed interim repair by a dedicated team of highly skilled staff who worked 24 7 since December the 3rd, the fourth road bridge opened on the 23rd of December, well ahead of schedule to 90% of traffic. A permanent repair to allow HGVs across the fourth road bridge will commence in the coming next few days and subject to favourable weather conditions and no further defects being identified, the bridge will reopen to HGVs in mid-February. Right, I thank the Minister for that answer. Could I ask him what discussions have taken place with the Road Haulage Association? Minister. There has been ongoing dialogue with Transport Scotland officials. Clearly, there is a priority to get the bridge reopened to HGV traffic. We have engaged with both the Road Haulage Association and the uh, Freight Transport Association uh, on that uh, announcement. Uh, an action plan has been produced. Uh, Cabinet Secretary and the Deputy First Minister have engaged uh, with industry and that action plan will support them in a range of areas uh, whilst we work on the, the full repair to the bridge to ensure that HGVs can, can cross the fourth. Thank you, Murdo Fraser. Sorry, okay. Murdo Fraser, followed by David Stewart. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, the reopening of the bridge to cars earlier than the original uh, indicated date was indeed welcome, but the Minister will be aware of the dismay amongst many businesses in Fife and beyond that the bridge did not reopen to HGVs uh, as originally hoped for on the 2nd of January, and there will still be several weeks before that will be the case. What assessment has the Scottish Government made of the impact on the Fife economy of this further delay? Minister. Well, the works were ahead of schedule. We want to get HGVs opened uh, across as quickly uh, as possible. Safety has to be paramount. We are working to that. I again thank the, the dedicated staff who have made it possible. We have undertaken an exercise around disruption to the area and there will be ongoing engagement with the local authorities. I think that many people appreciate the effort that government and their agencies have put in to ensure that the bridge has been reopened and will continue with that immense effort to get it reopened for HGVs to support commerce eh, and the haulage industry. And I would have thought that the Conservatives would support us in these measures to ensure, to ensure that everything is back to business and the government's interventions have been right and how we've handled this issue, building the new bridge and supporting industry in the interim. David Stewart, followed by Willie Rennie. <clears throat> Thank you, President Officer. And can I welcome the Minister's announcement that the bridge will be open uh, for HGVs? And can I place on record... Uh, my thanks, I'm sure all members' thanks, for all the work that the workforce have had to carry out in appalling conditions uh, over the last few months. Could I ask the uh, Minister if he could confirm that it is the active plan of the Scottish Government to provide compensation for hauliers who have lost out when, during the time that the bridge has been closed and the subsequent restrictions? Minister? Uh, no, the action plan specifically includes a number of other items, such as an HGV hotline to allow drivers to alert Traffic Scotland to incidents, extra supports for Trunk Road Incident Support Service, fast track maintenance along Truck Road uh, diversions, uh, support from local authorities in terms of keeping uh, roads clear, and the issue around uh, drivers' hours uh, relaxation that we're pursuing through the DFT. To Europe. Th those are the key areas in the action plan that had been agreed with industry, but of course dialogue continues and the priority has to be to get the fourth road bridge uh, reopened to all traffic. Will there any? Uh, can I thank the Minister for his constructive engagement on the West Fife travel plans, which was causing particular problems for my constituents. The temporary fix was supposed to allow all vehicles to use the bridge until the new bridge opens, when a permanent repair could be carried out. Why is the temporary fix insufficient for HGVs? And why has the permanent repair had to be brought forward? Minister? Well, I think it's clear that we're phasing these works. I know that Willie Rennie, to give him credit, has taken a very active interest in the technical briefings that were offered uh, to, to MSPs. I'm happy to provide uh, even more. This temporary repair has allowed over 90% of traffic uh, to cross the fourth. The further strengthening works will ensure that safety uh, isn't compromised and that the uh, bridge can carry HGV traffic. This is all based on the engineering expertise that we have depended upon and who I think are, are carrying out excellent uh, works uh, on the bridge. And I'm happy to share even more information to, to show how these phase works uh, will give the, the certainty that is being sought. 
Thank you. That ends topical questions. We'll now move on to the next item.